Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately and the power of his resurrection. And the fellow who's suffering being conformed to his death. Got to say all of it, I guess. And at any rate, isn't it exciting? But anyway, I think you're beginning to get the idea. You know, if you're going to understand God's ways, his thoughts, and why he does what he does, you're going to have to really examine the entire scriptures. And again, we live in the letters to the church. I understand that. But in our study time and everything, we need to take time to familiarize ourselves with some of these other parts of the Bible. All right. So then, now we talked about how Satan was totally stripped and defeated and cast out of heaven and how we, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we received unlimited power and unlimited ability to enforce the victory that was already won in heaven. So Satan has already been defeated. See, it goes back to when we were talking about perfect and imperfect tenses in the Hebrew. And of course, if you're imperfect, you're always trying, you're always at war with the devil, trying to defeat the devil and all this. Boy, the devil did this, the devil did that. We're at war with the devil, spiritual warfare, you know, whatever. But that's imperfect, and you never arrive. It's all, if you, imperfect is always ends up being imperfect because everything's incomplete. But we remember in perfect tense, we operate from the place of everything has already been accomplished. Now, it's the same with the devil. He's already been kicked out of heaven. He's already been stripped of, power, of all power and authority. Jesus did that for us. The angels, of uh, Michael and his angels and all of that. It's all, he's already defeated. He's already stripped of all power and authority. And so Jesus gives us his name. And it says in Philippians 2, verse 8 to 11, And being found in the appearance of a man, he, Jesus, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name, which is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should and must bow of those in heaven and those in earth and those under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we have been given the name of Jesus. The church has. So the devil's already defeated. So in the name of Jesus, he has to flee. And that's it. He's already defeated. So if he's starting to mess with you, your family, your house, you then begin to exercise this authority. Now, the church in Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Now, serpents and scorpions are the highest ranking angels. That's like the devil and all of these archangels and everything, or, or, or Satan rather. And then, of course, behold, I give you the power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Second, and then thirdly, he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Luke 16, 19, Luke 8, Luke Matthew 18, 18. Whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven or loose on earth, loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 12, 29. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods? Unless he first binds the strong man, then he will plunder his house. <laughs> Whoa! All right! So in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind you, Satan, and all forces of darkness, I forbid, and, 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 and evil spirits, uh, demons and evil spirits, I bind you all and hold you bound and I'm paralyzed and under my feet to include but not limited to principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkest age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Praise God. There's binding or loosing. You, you bind at demons when you're praying for people. You bind that spirit of alcohol. You loose them from it. And, and, you, and, you, and you loose the spirit of God in their lives. What have you? Binding or loosing. Okay, what do we do? The name of Jesus. Behold, I give you power. And binding and loosing. And then, of course, how about James 4, 7? Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. And literally it says, as if in terror. But what's the condition? Submitting to God. With a, and I always say this way, Father, I submit to you with a vow of absolute obedience and if need be unto death. And I declare the devil flees into authority. When I submit to God, that means I'm making an oath, a vow. Lord, I'm going to obey you and whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to obey you. And with obedience comes blessing. Disobedience comes the curses, right? Obedience brings the blessings. All right, so then, we have the church then has been given absolute authority over Satan and all forces of darkness. But see, the point is, it's already done. It's already done. Satan has already been defeated. We're not at war with him. 
All we do is enforce the victory with the unlimited power and ability and the blood of Jesus and high, as our high priest and new blood covenant. We just, we just enforce the victory that was already won. That's what we do. We enforce the law <laughs> like a policeman would. And then, of course, that brings us back here to Ephesians. And now we can read this from, from that perspective. It's already done. We're not at war with the devil. He's already defeated. So here's what we do. We obey God. So we go to Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, we have unlimited power and ability, don't we, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. He's still the God of this world system. He's still going to try to come at us with different things, you know, and what have you. But we put on the whole armor of God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We do not wrestle. See, we're not at war with them, uh, but we're in, a, we're in a sense, we're wrestling with them. They're coming at us, but we exercise the name of Jesus and everything else. Therefore, take up the whole armor, not part of the armor, the whole armor, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Not only has God stripped Satan of all power and authority, and he has no legal right to anything that we have. We have authority over him. But in order to do that, we need to put on, uh, God gives us armor to put on. We're in this natural realm. Now, I want you to put some armor on so that you can withstand the wiles of the devil. So you don't have to be uh, defeated by him. He's already defeated. You defeat him. You hold him in that defeat. And so he says, 14, having girded your faith waist with truth. Well, Jesus is. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. God's word is truth. We need to have God's word in our hearts. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, righteousness. I have right standing with God like I've never ever done anything wrong. And I put on that breastplate. You know, I don't belong to Satan. I belong to God. I've got on the breastplate of righteousness. And another word for righteousness, two things. One for having has to do with our standing with God. And then the other thing, righteousness, has to do with the way we live. Right standing, doing what's right. So I put on the breastplate of doing what's right. And when I do what's right, that leads on to holiness. According to Romans 6, 19, and, and righteousness leads to holiness. So I put on the breastplate of holiness, the breastplate of righteousness. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We need, we need to study and prepare ourselves. We need to grow strong spiritually, materially, financially, in every way. But we need to grow strong in the authority of the believer. Grow strong in the fact that he's already defeated. Put on that so that we can set people, others free and, and share it with others. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which we will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. He's totally defeated, but he can take shots at us. He's still the king of the, the prince of the world system. And he'll take shots at us with these fiery darts or what have you. But if we have the shield, if we are walking in faith, faith is the shield. Faith in God. Faith in God is the shield. And it'll quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Back parts, hind parts all around us in Jesus' name. And then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So, the helmet of salvation, protecting your mind, getting your mind renewed so the devil can't get in there and ultimately in your heart. And then we have the sword of the spirit. That's the only, they say, offensive weapon. It's the word of God. And the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Isn't that what the Bible tells us? Sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder. So it's a weapon to be, that Satan has to deal with. <laughs> I come back here to Philippians 4.12, or Hebrews, I'm sorry. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit of the joints of Maryland as the cerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So this word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Now, praying always. See, this is put on the whole armor of God. This is prayer armor. And you have this armor on, I'm telling you, you can take on, uh, you can stand against the devil and all his forces and everything and continue to hold them defeated and forcing the victory that was already won in heaven. And that we may, utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. Well, if I put on the whole armor of God, I know the gospel and I can boldly declare it in Jesus' name, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Woo-hee! So, from the perfect tense, he's already defeated. Now, all we do is enforce the victory, and God's given us everything we need to enforce it. 
Praise God. You be blessed in everything you set your hands to do. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next session. Amen.